All right, good morning, everybody. Good to be on with you on this wonderful Thursday morning. Uh, and thank you so much for being on today. We're glad to be with you. Uh, and look forward to our look into the Word of God today. Sorry, we are a couple minutes late here uh, today, uh, but but we made it. And that's what's important and uh, glad that we are on. So sorry, uh, some of you uh, looking for us about five minutes ago. We are, we're here. Uh, and so we'll give you a chance to get on here uh, just for another minute or so. We had a great night at church last night, good Bible study. We had a good group of young people out uh, for The Rock as well, and always exciting to see our young people. Uh, and I want to uh, give a special shout-out to all of our Rock workers who work with our young people. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for your love for the kids uh, and your willingness to invest in them. It is a tremendous privilege and responsibility and thank you all so much for all of your work uh, in uh, the ministry there uh, now we're going to go ahead and look at revelation chapter number six and pick up where we left off we left off uh, just finishing up the fourth seal judgment and jumping into the fifth seal judgment and we'll look at that here uh, this morning i think we're going to look at the fifth seal and the sixth seal uh, and uh, then the uh, the seventh seal, I believe we'll look at uh, down the road just a little bit here. But we'll look at five and six here this morning, these seal judgments. Remember, these seal judgments are uh, happening at the beginning of the, of the tribulation. We know that the Antichrist comes in peace, uh, and that peace uh, is, is not, does not last very long. Uh, it turns to, to war and all of that, which we looked at yesterday, the four different horsemen. Uh, coming, we know that famine, disease, all of that, all of that stuff is is being, all of, all of God's judgment in that fashion is being poured out upon the earth. We know that a fourth of the population dies as a result of the economic uh, depression, as a result of the famine, and so on. Uh, and so, or that that leads us into this fifth seal in Revelation chapter six and verse number nine. Uh, verse number nine says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, remember it's Jesus opening the seal. He's the only one that is worthy to do so. Uh, John says, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And so these would be martyrs of the faith. These would be individuals who gave their life uh, in the service of Jesus Christ. And so uh, this fifth seal opens, and then we see the souls of those that had been, been martyred for their faith. In verse number 10, they cry, they cry out, it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, before we move on, I think this is important here. Uh, we, we see uh, their blood crying out for God's vengeance uh, upon those that had taken their lives upon the earth for their uh, destroying of Christ's followers. And this is, I thought this was very interesting. Uh, we're in Revelation. Keep your finger there. Let's go all the way back to Genesis, if you would. Look what uh, uh, happens in Genesis chapter number four. In Genesis chapter number four, we, we read of the murder of Cain and Abel. And in chapter four, verse number 10, the Bible says, and he said, what hast thou done? Uh, God speaking to Cain, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. You know, there's a there's a a lot of people that think that that mankind gets away with murder, gets away with sin, uh, and, and, and the like. Uh, there's a lot of people that say, how could God allow this to happen? Uh, well, let me just remind you that God God knows all, God sees all, God does not forget, and and God God knows here in, here in Genesis, uh, Abel's blood cried out to the Lord from the ground, and God deals with Cain uh, right then and there. We might we might be as we live here in 2023, we might say, man, there uh, so many people have 
uh, have lost their lives for the faith of the gospel. We read of the great missionaries who were uh, killed for their faith. We read of the early Christians uh, uh, in the early church uh, who were killed for their faith. And, and here they are, this fifth seal in the midst of the tribulation, uh, where their blood continues to cry out, says, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Okay? Uh, and, and we note that God is going to avenge their blood that was shed. We read, we continue to read of the, of the mar martyrs here, verse number 11, where it tells us back in Revelation chapter number 6, And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, okay? So white robes are given to them. Those white robes indicating the, uh, the righteousness of, of Jesus Christ. They're clothed in Jesus' righteousness. And, and, uh, and it was said to them that they should rest for a little season. When are the martyrs, when are the believers going to, to return to the earth? When is God going to... Uh, judge the earth. We know that Jesus comes back and rules and reigns in that millennial reign, and the Christian, the believer, joins him in reigning. Uh, and then look at verse number 11. Right in the middle of it, they, that they should rest here for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. During the tribulation, there are going to be scores of people, probably millions of people, that are going to trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And in the midst of the tribulation, many of those uh, will lose their life for their faith in Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is telling them, tells them here, uh, rest yet for a little while until your, their fellow uh, servants also and their brethren that should be killed as, that, as they were should be fulfilled. He says, patience, there are others that are going to join you. Uh, and that's a sad thing that people would lose their life, uh, but that's a sad, a sad reality. In the world we live in today now, you, th you, th you think about 2023. We are not in the tribulation because the rapture of the church has not happened yet. But uh, there are people that are being persecuted for their faith. Uh, even, even in recent days, there's been cries, death to the Jews and death to, to Christians, okay? Uh, and we note that even... And we've talked about this already. We know that even the uh, the battle that we see in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas is a religious battle. We know that even in the protests in our streets uh, here in America, uh, those that would be protesting in, uh, and uh, in in favor of of uh, Palestine, in favor of the Palestinian people and Hamas, uh, they are stating that uh, that it is a religious warfare. They're seeking to promote uh, I Islam, uh, and they say death to the Jew, death to Americans. They say death to the Jew, death to Christians. Why? Because they want there to be this one world religion of Islam. Uh, and uh, the religion of Islam is a, and I'll just be honest with you, is a wicked religion. Uh, because it, it, it pulls people away from Jesus Christ. It distracts people from the truth. Uh, and it is a, a bloody religion. It is a uh, death-filled religion. Uh, you think about there, there's, there's reward. Uh, Allah gives reward for uh, people that would kill others. That's, that's completely the opposite of Christianity. Rather than Allah, their God, saying, hey, you kill the infidels, you kill Christians, Jews, uh, and you'll be rewarded, uh, God, the God of the Bible, sent his own son to be the one that would die uh, for us so that we might have heaven. And the God of the Bible, the one true God, offers offers heaven uh, to creation, to mankind, uh, freely. Uh, uh, Jesus paid the price, whereas you look at the reward uh, if if you kill others and so on. And so anyway, you see all of that. And here in the, in the tribulation time period, there are going to be many uh, that lose their life for the faith of the gospel. Now, let's look at the sixth seal, verse number 12. And I beheld... When he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. 
And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the sun and the moon became as blood. Uh, and what might be the reasoning for that? I mean, there's some, there's maybe some natural uh, reasons for that. In, in recent years, we've seen eclipses uh, and the blood moon, uh, and so on. Uh, we've seen the eclipsing of the sun, which this would be extreme because the sun became black as sackcloth, sackcloth and the moon became as blood. And so we see these would be uh, uh, extreme. But we know that um, oh, this is, this is uh, because of the wars may be going on. There may be much destruction and so on. Uh, and so that the sun, the moon are blotted out in some way because of the wars and all of that. And I get that. Uh, that that may be the case as well. Uh, we don't know exactly how this happens. We just know that God makes it happen or allows it to happen. That God is being the judge, uh, and the sun uh, became black as sackcloth. The moon became as blood. Now, just to kind of kind of uh, put this out there a little bit more, as we look at the verse number thirteen, this kind of uh, shows a little bit more that that it is more than just what's happening on earth between man. Uh, that is causing this uh, this darkening of the sun and of the moon. Look at verse number 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as fig, uh, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And so what's going on? Uh, it seems that all of the universe, all of the heavens uh, are, are in disarray. Uh, and so you've got the stars falling from heaven, maybe asteroids and comets and those types of things. Uh, falling from the heavens and crashing into the earth, uh, and and what would allow that would be the uh, the moon, uh, the different planets not doing not doing what God had put them in order in the in the universe to do in regards to pulling those those uh, comets, those asteroids, and that uh, towards uh, the bigger planets, but rather uh, they're not functioning the way that they were created. Uh, and uh, what they were put in space to do. And now these, these uh, uh, stars, these asteroids, come, they come crashing into the earth, okay? Uh, and and look, what, look what happens. We, we find in verse number 12, you go back to that, there was a great earthquake uh, on the earth. Then we have the sun, we have the moon. And maybe as a result of the earthquake this happened, or maybe uh, these, uh, these items from space have caused the earthquake and so on. Look at verse number 14. Uh, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And so we see even the geography of the earth has changed because of this earthquake. Mountains are, are moving. Islands are moving. We've already had a quarter of the population die, and now you've got these... Uh, geographical events taking place, uh, ge geological events taking place and changing the geography of the earth and people probably losing their life in that as well. In fact, it is so bad in verse number 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the uh, chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains, the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So get th this is what's going on. Uh, all of this is happening in the earth. The geography is changing. Uh, items falling from the sky on the earth and changing the geography of the earth. Mountains moving, islands moving. Uh, all of this craziness going on. The sun is, is, is blocked out. The, the moon is uh, uh, turned to blood, okay? Uh, and... What does mankind do? They hide themselves in the mountains, which this is interesting. Uh, hiding in the mountains, that there is a, uh, people, governments, uh, companies uh, that have built into mountains. Almost, uh, I've seen. I've seen pictures. I haven't done research on them, but man, it's pretty impressive what they've done inside some of these mountains. Uh, I, I, I kind of picture where they're hiding. Uh, they're hiding in caves, obviously, uh, hiding uh, underground. Uh, there, there are uh, subways underground, uh, maybe even uh, basements deep underground, uh, bomb shelters underground. Uh, 
uh, and the like. And so there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, hey, P, uh, we've uh, uh, done a lot of coal mining, those sorts of things. There's a lot of room underground where mankind is hiding themselves. And what do they say? They don't, they don't call on God to save them. They don't call on God to, uh, to stay his hand of judgment, but rather they, they, they hide in the dens, the rocks and mountains, and they say to the mountains and rocks, isn't that typical for mankind? Speaking to the mountains of rocks as if the mountains and if the rocks can hear them. But they say, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. They recognize what, who it is that's judging the earth. They recognize who it is that is allowing all of this to happen and causing all of this to happen. Uh, and, they, and rather than repenting, rather than turning to God, rather than trusting in the Lamb, the wrath of the Lamb, that's who they say here, rather than trusting in him, uh, they try to hide from him and call upon the rocks and mountains to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. How foolish uh, to, to try to hide from God. Their whole world is being torn apart at the seams, and they don't turn to the one uh, that can save them, but rather they turn once again to creation uh, to, to hide them from the Creator. Uh, and we how sad this is to see this rejection of this righteous judge this the wrath of the lamb to recognize him as for who he is and to turn their back on and try to hide now mankind this is what mankind has done since the beginning of time uh, in regards to to the reality of their sin adam and eve when they sinned in the garden of eden what did they do? In their rebellion, in their shame, they went and hid from God. You can't hide from God. Uh, you look at even, uh, I think, a Jonah. Jonah told by God to go to Nineveh, and Jonah gets on a ship and go hide, goes and hides in the, in the bottom of the ship, uh, trying to hide from God, thinking that he can trick God. Can't hide from the Lord. And here in Revelation, rather than turning to God, they try to hide from God. And we see this, this pride that is built up in mankind. Verse number 17, we'll end with this. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Uh, we know the answer to that question. No man can stand. Uh, no man can stand. We're talking about Almighty God here. Uh, we're talking about our Savior, Jesus Christ. No man can stand against the Lord. Uh, and yet... Mankind here at the seventh or the sixth seal judgment recognizes God, Jesus, for who he is and rejects him. And then I want to kind of bring this home just for a moment for the Christian today. Thankfully, we'll be in heaven when this is occurring. Uh, but I think today, how many of us are like uh, the people described here in the sixth seal judgment to where we know, we know God we recognize Jesus for being our Savior, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. We recognize him for that. And yet we try to, we continue in our sin. Uh, we hide our sin thinking that God doesn't see it. He does. Uh, and, and then we, with pride, we say it's not that big a deal. Uh, shame on us. Uh, as believers, we've put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We know better, but we don't do better. And so that's the challenge for us today. Let's do better. Uh, and let's, let's, let's know and understand that we cannot hide from God. We cannot hide our sin from God. Uh, let's simply confess our sin, forsake our sin, and let's live for the Lord because we know who he is based upon this precious book right here. Okay, we'll end with that today. Thank you for being on this morning. Once again, sorry we were a couple minutes late and we're a couple minutes over time. I apologize for that. Almost 20 minutes here today. But thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both. Thank you so much for being on today. Gene, good morning to you. Hope that you have a great day. Charlie and Marcia, good morning to you guys. Have an awesome day. Jody, greetings to you. Have a wonderful day. Brian and Cindy, thank you so much for being on and good morning to you.
you. Uh, Dennis and Geraldine, good morning to you as well. And so sorry to hear about that deer that you hit last night, but th I'm so thankful that you guys are okay and doing good. Hopefully the car is doing well this morning uh, as well. And then uh, thank you so much for that encouraging comment there, Cliff and Karen. Uh, and uh, it's been a wonderful study as we've walked into the book of Genesis on Wednesday nights. Listen, if you don't have a church that you go to on Wednesday nights, we'd love to have you. Uh, come on out, and you can jump into that study in the book of Genesis. All right. Uh, Lord bless you all. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Lord willing, we'll touch base again tomorrow morning for our Power Up.